Hi, I'm Jeff Liddy, the window and door expert. I'm standing here in Houston, Texas, in our showroom where we have over a dozen brands of windows and doors to choose from. Today, I wanna to talk to you about low E coatings and argon gas. Now, before we get started, if you live in Houston, I'd love to meet you. If you don't, check out the windowexperts.com. I've got a great long list of great window companies all over the US. Maybe I know somebody near you. Now, people say, Jeff, what is low E? This is a brief, condensed sort of like version of a longer video I made where I go into great detail about Lowy. It's right up here, you can click, or down here in the description, go check it out. I think it's gonna be really beneficial for you to learn more about Lowy. So if you notice here, I've got this cute little heat lamp and I can feel extreme heat coming off of that. In fact, it's kind of fun, it's kind of like a little science project here. You can see that we have this little weather vane that kind of spins around as the sun, actually the heat, the infrared rays, make that spin. So today I'm going to talk to you about the difference between what types of low E choices are out there. Like Jeff, what can I do? I've heard of low E. Well, low E stands for low emissivity. It's a coating. It's a coating that's applied to the glass. Now, we're going to start with just a clear piece of glass. If you have single pane clear glass windows right now in your home, this is probably similar to what you're experiencing. Now, if you notice when I put that in front of there, it doesn't seem like it's actually doing anything to help reduce this infrared heat from coming through and actually spinning our little science project over here. But I've got a little thermal uh, gun here, laser gun that I can point at it and see what temperatures we have. And it looks to me like we've got somewhere around 83, 85 degrees, somewhere in that category. Pretty nice. So this does, oh, 87, 88, okay, 88.9. We're gonna call this 89 degrees. That's what clear glass does. This heat is just pretty much coming through that glass. So we can have uh, another experiment here. This is double pane instead of single pane. So right away you would think, okay, it's going to be better because I have two coats, uh, two pieces of glass, but this also has low E on it. If you, if you notice, it's not quite perfectly transparent. It almost looks like it's got a little bit of tint to it, right? It's got like, almost like you would say sunglasses on, but not quite that dark. So this is what we call the, 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 two, the 270 low E. I'm gonna put that up there and we'll see how this actually starts to slow down. I can tell it's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And let's take a reading here on this. I'm gonna point that at that, ah, 78 degrees, 78 degrees, 77 degrees. In fact, if I leave it on here for just a few more seconds, you'll see that basically this thing is coming to a stop. That's pretty good. When you want to think about that at your house, think how much more comfortable you would be in that case. All right, so then let's go to the next one because this has two coats of low emissivity coating. This one has three coats of low emissivity coating. Let's give this a chance to start spinning back up. There it goes. I'm gonna put the three coats in here and this one actually is a little bit darker. It's, it's about 10% darker than the other one. And I'm gonna go through some of those numbers in just a minute and explain to you exactly what you get. You can see it's actually coming to a complete stop there. Let's take a look at the temperature on this one. Oh, look at this. This is 76 degrees, 77 degrees. This is actually, this is really good. So people say, well then Jeff, what are the differences and why would I pick one over another? Well, if you're going to be in a climate where you have extreme direct sunlight like we do in Houston, especially like on a west wall of your house where the sun sets over there, just really bakes on it, you're probably going to want to go with three coats of low E because you have the most reflective properties of the heat sending it back out. Now, if you don't have that, say you're looking at the north side of the house or you have a lot of shade trees, et cetera. We have a neighborhood here called the Woodlands. Duh, duh, the Woodlands, lots of trees. We don't get much direct sunlight, so it's not probably as important there. Maybe we want to use two coats of low E. Why? Well, here's why. When you have a two coat of low E product like this, and by the way, look at that, that has virtually come to a stop. When you have two coats of low E, this is called 270. 270 basically says that 70% of the light is still able to come through and it has two coats of low E, so 270. This is called 366. But what do you think that means? Well, it means that it has three coats of low E and 66% of the light is allowed to come through. So it's really kind of hard to tell from our videos, but you can see that one's a little bit brighter than the other, it lets a little more light in. So let's say that you have a house that was built in the 50s and you have Low, over, low ceilings and you have a big overhang on the outside, right? A lot of houses like that were built in the 50s, 60s. You don't have very many windows, you want more light. So there's this assumption automatically when people sell windows, like I'm gonna sell you the most energy efficient window I can sell you. Well, that may not be actually doing you a favor. 
You want the right amount of energy efficiency based on your circumstances. I think it's sometimes just the default setting to say, we're gonna go with low E 366 because it has the best ratings. But it may make your house really dark and you don't want that. You may not want it on certain walls of the house. So sometimes we do a hybrid. Maybe some parts of the house have 270 and then we go to the west side of the house and we'll do a 366. Why? Because that's where we get the most impact. That's where we get the most heat. Now, if you live in Florida, okay, and you've got uh, direct sunlight and no trees, that's different than Houston. If you live in Phoenix, Arizona, where you have absolutely no shade and you know, your, your tree is a 10 foot or four foot or three foot cactus bush, you're probably going to have a different opinion. You might wanna have the 366 on all of the windows. But having the right, um, the right glass with the right low E based on your environment is going to be critical. Now, last thing I wanna cover about this is going to be argon gas. People say, well, Jeff, what is argon gas? How can I tell if I have it in my window? Well, you really can't tell. It's invisible, it's inorganic. You could actually inhale it like you would helium and uh, it won't hurt you. I wouldn't suggest you do that, but argon gas basically is six times heavier than air, six times heavier than air. And we know that air does conduct heat and cold. And so having argon gas sealed in between the two panes of glass, having it sealed in there actually can be a real benefit to your energy efficiency and to your comfort for a couple of reasons. Number one, it does reduce the transfer of heat and cold, but also number two, it actually helps reduce the amount of sound that comes through the window. So if you think about this, if you're trying to get sound reduction, having argon gas in there can actually be of benefit. Now think about a swimming pool. If I took a swimming pool and it was completely empty and I could just walk across a swimming pool, right? But if I filled it up with water, have you noticed how it's like, oh man, that takes more effort. Oh, that's harder to do. That's the whole idea behind argon gas. The fact that it's thicker than air means that it's harder for sound, it's harder for heat, it's harder for cold to make that transfer between the two. Now, just one more note on that. Krypton gas, yes, there is such a thing as krypton gas, actually is even more efficient than argon gas. But in recent years, the price of krypton gas has gone through the roof. Like literally no one's even using krypton gas anymore because if you're using krypton gas, your windows would probably cost an extra thousand dollars a piece. That's how expensive krypton gas is. But if I'm answering a question because somebody might come up to you and say, well, I had krypton in my windows 10 years ago. 10 years ago, yes, but not recently. I think it's worth getting the argon gas. I believe it's worth having at least two coats of low E. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. Let me know if I can help you. Check out thewindowexperts.com to find a window company near you. Have a great day. I'll talk to you again real soon.